Welcome to the week 4 summary for the Laravel microservice course and this week we've really entered the final stretch because we're getting that final data ready with all the right properties in the right shape in order to forward it to the recipient, the recipient being our sort of make-believe marketing platform called Audience Grid. And so the work is sort of centred around subscription forwarders, so I chose the name forwarders originally on the on the symphony microservice course because it does describe what you're doing you're taking data and you're forwarding it elsewhere and so uh, there's a couple of steps to this or a couple of methods so i've created an interface for it with a supports method and that is to say does this forwarder is this forwarder responsible for forwarding this subscription and so that should evaluate to true or false if it evaluates to true then we go into the process of forwarding it and that really consists of three steps so um, I've rolled the steps out in comments we're going to map to an audience grid subscription ie a class which models the recipients expected data then what we do is we're going to validate to make sure that all the correct properties are set and that it has all the right data with all the right types and then it's simply a case of taking our uh, HTTP client which we looked at in a previous week's summary and just forwarding that data to Audience Grid. Okay and so in a similar way that we did with our webhook handlers we could have multiple forwarders which are responsible for forwarding for different events and so for that what I did in the app service provider is did a similar tactic as what we've used previously where we tagged a bunch of services we only actually have one initially and so any of our forwarders what we're doing is we're tagging them with a particular name I've used the name of the interface and then when we created the Google webhook handler what we've done is we've just injected any objects which are tagged with the name Google subscription forwarder so it's something which we've done before but interestingly in the course what I do is I explain what we're doing and then I let you have a go at actually doing this yourself because it's something that we've done before and the best way to learn is really to have a go at things yourself and then once that Google webhook handler was complete because we completed that in this section of work uh, I created a test for it, but an interesting thing or an interesting lesson I created on this one was the use of to-dos in PEST. And so I started out with something like this. So if we remove all code out of the, each of these tests, and it was all about really planning tests or how to decide what to test if you're mentoring others. And PEST has this really cool feature uh, where you can just write out the test with the name or the description and then instead of uh, writing the test straight away you can just tag on to do's and so what that means is you can write all the tests or all the scenarios that you plan to test tag on a to do and when you run them it just tells you what you're planning to do inside of here you just write what you expect this test to do and so if you're mentoring a junior or something like that or just another member of the team and sometimes people know what to test but they are oh sorry people know how to test but they're not sure what to test and so you can just plan your tests using pest to do's like that and so um, the good lesson on that one and tells you all about to do's and some other pest stuff which I think you'll enjoy and then staying with the subject of PEST, I also covered uh, test helpers. And so for our scenario, we needed to create a subscription, a Google subscription for the test. But as you can see, creating the subscription, there's quite a lot of properties to set. And you might need to create this, this subscription or a subscription in multiple tests and so I took advantage of PEST's test helpers so in the PEST.php file just to create this helper method called create subscription where it creates a subscription with a set of defaults but if you want to override it and provide some custom values then you can insert some overrides there and they will override these defaults and so there you've got a nice helper method which is used to create subscriptions and I used it in that Google webhook test so as you can see here I've created a script subscription using that method so you can imagine if you needed to create a subscription in all your tests 
doing this would be quite unwieldy and quite painful, wouldn't it? But if you've got a helper method, um, you can drop it in this pest.php file and it'll be available to all of your pest tests. So that's really useful and I'll be able to get lots of reuse out of that. Another thing I covered, different kind of testing, testing uh, static analysis testing with PHP Stan. I noticed that I was getting a lot of very similar errors in one file and I didn't want to go and stop what I was doing and break momentum to go and take care of it there and then. So what I did is in the PHP Stan.neon where you can exclude paths that you don't want to actually analyze you can set the path to an actual file and so here I set it to my subscription factory because it was producing a lot of errors which were all very similar and I just decided I'm going to come back to this and sort that out later and so for the time being I just suppressed it using this. So uh, not recommended to leave like technical debt in your uh, projects but because of the nature of what we're doing here, it's a tutorial project. I didn't want to get sidetracked. And also, it shows you how you can suppress errors if you need to. So that's probably a useful piece of information on that lesson. Okay, and then we got on to actually modeling the data, which will be sent to Audience Grid. And for this, I took advantage of an interface in Laravel called Arrayable. Arrayable has one method and that is to array. So uh, at the very beginning of the course, what I did was I just created a little file, which isn't part of the uh, project, but it was just to have a reference as to what the data should look like, what the nesting should be, what the properties should be, and what kind of values they should hold. And so what I've done is I've used the to array method, which is part of the arrayable interface, to define what the data should look like, what shape it should be. And so when I'm forwarding the data, all I need to do is when I'm using the HTTP client, just call to array on this audience grid subscription object that will format it. And then it can just be JSON encoded and forwarded to audience grid. Okay, and then we had to solve the problem of taking one set of data, i.e. the Google subscription, and getting the values in there or using the values in there in order to get an object together, our audience grid subscription containing the data in the shape that audience grid expects. And so in order to do that, I simply created a class called a mapper and that takes a Google subscription and maps those values from that Google subscription to properties on an audience grid subscription. And so this is what that mapper looks like. Uh, as you can see, just one method on there takes a Google subscription and spits out an audience grid subscription. And really it's just a case of taking those values or taking some values from one and using them to populate values on another. But all nicely encapsulated I'm not polluting my folder with a load of logic which might change. So if anything does change in the future, the only place where it needs to change is inside this mapper here. And then the final thing that I've done this week, uh, which I did early on Saturday morning, was to just test that mapper that we created. So what we're doing is starting out with a setup with a Google subscription. We want to map that in order to produce an audience grid subscription. But you'll notice when we're testing to check that we have produced an audience grid subscription with the correct properties, I'm actually using the to array method on the audience grid subscription as part of the test. So getting quite a lot of usage out of that method. Another thing which I've just actually noticed is that I've created a Google subscription here where I could actually use my helper. So let's do that instead. So we're going to say Google subscription equals, I'll say create a subscription. I'm not sure if I need any overrides, but I'll comment this out. I think I've used the actual same values as what is used in the defaults. So let's actually run this. Make sure I give that the right name. So vendor bin pest subscription mapper test. And that's actually helped me discover that I've got something wrong in my expectation here. It shouldn't be sub a month for the start date there. Let's run this again. Okay, cool. So uh, in the process of showing you what I've been working on this week, 
I've just found a shorter way of doing something because I was originally doing that the long way and we're now using our subscription or create subscription helper method. So that's been this week really pretty good progress like I say we're now on the final section and so all that's really left to do on the microservice itself is I'm going to create a validator object. In fact, I've already started on that, uh, which will validate the audience grid subscription. So normally when you think of Laravel, you think of like validating requests, but you can validate other things. You just need to provide a set of rules as an array. So that'll be cool. We'll save that till next week. And then we're going to use our HTTP client um, in order to forward that subscription to audience grid and so that will really complete the microservice and like i said what we're going to do is we're now going to create another application which will be sort of a mimic of like a crm like audience grid which will receive the request from this microservice and you'll be able to see in a dashboard how the properties get changed when they get forwarded from this so it's going to be pretty cool still a bit left to go but i think i've probably got a couple more weeks of code and this course will be, uh, will be released very soon.